today's show. We look at what GAY is doing to help the homeless at their event this weekend. The Manchester Arena attacks homeless hero Chris Parker has been sentenced for theft and fraud. And we catch up with the University of Salford Rowing Club as they get ready for the UK's biggest student rowing competition. If we get within the top ten, you know, that's an achievement already, but you know, we want the best. Hello and welcome to the first Keys News of 2018. Today's top story, a man has driven himself to hospital after being stabbed five times on a street in Greater Manchester. The victim has been reported to have multiple stab wounds and believed to be in his 40s. The offender has not been found but is known to the Greater Manchester Police GMP have confirmed. Chris Parker, the homeless hero of the Manchester Arena attack, was sentenced to four years and three months in jail for theft. Parker, who admitted to stealing a purse and a mobile phone from the victims of the attack, was sentenced at Manchester Crown Court yesterday. Parker pled guilty to two counts of theft and one of fraud after he used a debit card from the stolen purse at a local's McDonald's restaurant. Judge David Hernandez told Parker in court, you are not the hero you pretended to be. And he has been banned from the Manchester City Centre for 10 years. Pollution levels in some areas of Greater Manchester have been recorded as being more than over one and a half times the legal limit. Manchester has the highest emergency hospital admission rates for asthma attacks in the UK at 244 per 100,000. We spoke to private English tutor Rebecca Wilkinson, who started suffering with asthma once she moved to Manchester. Uh, living with asthma varies drastically day to day, but when I first... Uh discovered I had asthma it was because my lips went blue at an exercise class and uh, then life changed quite significantly so now I have different types of inhaler depending on how bad the day is. Uh, I also regularly go and see a spirometrist who's a specialist asthma nurse um, and sometimes I have to cancel on the things that I want to do because I can't breathe. I started having asthma symptoms for the first time ever about six months into living in Manchester, which was two years ago. Um, people often comment that Manchester is quite a polluted place, but before I lived in Manchester I lived in London and I had no problems whatsoever. In the UK, every 10 seconds someone has a potentially life-threatening heart attack, with Manchester being the worst in the country. Salford City Mayor Paul Dennett visited Salford Healthcare yesterday, which has been running for 30 years to support residents who are affected by heart disease. The charity received a Queen's Award for Voluntary Service through its work to provide practical, emotional and social support. Members can get involved with activities including Tai Chi, holistic therapy, relaxation, weight gain management and blood pressure checks to improve a healthy mind and body. We spoke to Manchester's Paul Dennett about his visit. The service is run primarily by volunteers and people really interested in addressing issues such as social isolation, getting people out of their home and engaging with each other in a community environment like this. This is really important to the city, especially in a climate of cuts and austerity. You know, these sorts of services are absolutely vital. We're doing an awful lot through our schools and through our colleges to obviously raise people's awareness about healthy living, healthy lifestyles. What I certainly need to start doing is champion the cause, raising awareness around these services in the city. Now, LGBT homelessness has risen in previous years, and with more and more rough sleepers on the streets of Manchester, GAY are holding a charity night to help those in need, which they are calling Clubbing for Homelessness. I went down to Canal Street to find out what Sassay's event is all about. GAY is a world renowned LGBT club located right here in the heart of Manchester at the end of Canal Street. On Saturday the 3rd of February they're running an event that they're calling Clubbing for Homelessness and they're offering a door charge for donations for the homeless and their pets. Homelessness on the streets of Manchester is a growing concern as the number of people facing the cold is rising. According to Homeless Link, homelessness in the northwest of England has risen 37% since 2016. Numbers have risen nationally every year since 2010 and are projected to increase again. Also on the rise is LGBT homelessness. 24% of youth now identify as LGBT, an increase on previous years. 
in the gay village there is a predominantly strong homeless problem. Um, so instead of um, taking it to the council to try and be productive with that, we thought we could be a bit more hands-on approach and uh, get people to donate um, items of clothing, women's sanitary products, um, dog food for the pets, uh, warm clothes, sleeping bags, stuff like that. Pamela is homeless after being evicted from direct housing provided by the council. She currently braves the Manchester cold, relying on the generosity of passers-by. When I spoke to her, she said she had not heard of Saturday's nightclub event, but looks forward to the changes that it could bring. Just last year, Andy Burnham pledged to eradicate homelessness with cash for 270 homes for homeless people with the Greater Manchester Homes Partnership. GAY is doing their part, but is this enough to bring the homelessness crisis to an end? And now Jack is here with the sport. So tell us, Jack, what's happening with the class of 92? Thank you, Beth. Members of the Manchester United Class of 92 have had building plans for the university approved. The University Academy of 92, uh, as part of the £170 million Trafford Council plan for Greater Manchester, the plans approved as part of the Refresh Stretford Mass Plan, the university will offer sport, media and business courses and should be open in 2019. Salford University Bulk, a Boat Club will be competing against teams from all over the UK next month and been training intensively in preparation. On the 24th and 25th of February, the team will be competing against the rest of the UK in British universities and college sport fours and eights head race. We spoke to Shafiq Shazili, who is a member of the Salford University Boat Club. So the race is in four weeks now. How confident are you? Well, before last week, I would have said not very, but after the training camp, I think the whole team as a crew, we've gained confidence with you know all the hours on the water together, all the training sessions. But I think within the next four weeks, we should be more or less prepared for the race. So finally, what are your predictions? Uh, you never know. I think <laughs> we've got a strong crew this year. Hopefully, the eight that we set out in the race mm -hmm. in four weeks will do well. I think there will be about 30 boats in that category. And if we get within the top 10, you know, that's an achievement already, but, you know, we want the best. Thank you very much. Manchester United could allow a number of youngsters to leave on loan before transfer deadline tonight to help the transition from junior level. Also, first-team players Ashley Young and Daley Blind have entered the last five months of their contracts, but Young could start against Spurs tonight at Wembley whilst Blind is nursing an ankle injury. United have said they will trigger one-year extensions on Blind and Young's deals, having done the same with Ander Herrera, Luke Shaw and Juan Mata. Manchester Giants signed Jack Crook for the remainder of the British Basketball League. The 6'11 Bury born player has signed for the club leaving Georgian Rostavi, where he averaged 10 points and 9 rebounds per game this season. So Joe, in a 1v1 do you think you could take Crook on in a game of basketball? <laughs> <laughs> now, how, he's 6 foot 11 6 say. foot 11. See, I'm, I'm 6 foot 2. You tower over me. And, and yeah, yeah, I thought I was tall. Well he's a foot bigger than I am. <laughs> Wow. Oh, fair. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but in answer to your question, um, no, no, I don't really don't think I could. I really no. don't think I could. Um, but Manchester apparently uh, has now been listed among the top most exciting cities in the world, ranking above cities such as Barcelona and Lisbon. How, That's right. how is this? Um, so, Time Out did a poll of people who live in these cities that were included. So, Chicago is number one. And you, um, you've just come back from Chicago, I have haven't you? just come back from Chicago. I spent four months living there, and it's definitely one of the best cities in the whole world. So, so it, it deserves to be at the it top. It definitely deserves to be at the top. The nightlife, the food, everything's perfect. But I was so surprised that Manchester came in seven, even before um, Barcelona and Lisbon. Absolutely crazy. Maz. Absolutely, Absolutely crazy. Maz. <laughs> Um, but it's been such a miserable day here outside. So let's see what the rest of the day has to Hold. Here's Nicola Bartosova with the weather. Good afternoon to you. Today is cold and windy day with sunny spells and scattered showers. The showers will be even heavier with hail and thunder later on. Tomorrow will remain cold and windy across the whole region, mostly dry with sunny spells and temperatures around 6 degrees. Friday will be cold and we can expect similar temperatures like on Thursday around 6 degrees. Rain is also expected overnight.
So as we head into the weekend, it will continue to be breezy across the region, cold with sunny spells and possibly showers on Saturday. So if you're planning to go to see the game Manchester United versus Huddersfield on Saturday, don't forget to bring your brawler with you just in case. That's all from us on Keys News this week. Keep up to date with all our latest news on Facebook and Twitter at Keys News and on our website, keysnews.net. Keys News will be back here next week, but for now, thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.